Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and we see it sometimes. We see some people running their camera at the bottom of the OTA versus the top. And if you're like me, you ask why. Why would they run the camera at the bottom versus the top? Is it aesthetics? Is there a practical purpose to it? Well, one of our fellow viewers, Carl, sent me an email the other day asking just that. Why would the camera be at the bottom of the OTA versus the top? What's the practical purpose of it? And is there really a difference between having the camera at the top versus the bottom? And that is an amazing question, Carl, and I'm very happy to answer that. And I'm very happy to answer to your request for a video on it. And that's what today's video is. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming information. Now let's jump in and learn why we would run a camera at the bottom versus the top as well as other tips to fine tune the balance of your telescope. Now in my original video going over balance, I go over why it's important, covering topics such as gear backlash within your mount, as well as the benefits that it has with guiding. Now, a great question was brought up, and that is, why do some people run their camera upside down? And it has everything to do with balance. It's important to think of this as a scale, and we wanna balance the scale. And what I mean by that, if I were to unlock RA, right now the camera's up on top. So if I were to let this come down, Notice how the camera is further out, making this side even heavier. So even with my counterweights maxed out as far as they'll go, this just will not balance. Notice how if I let this go, it just falls straight down. So what we would do, there's a couple of things that you can do. One is we can go get heavier counterweights or we can try a free option. And that's moving the camera to the bottom. And what that does is it brings the weight that's extended outward and brings it more inward, more in the center line of where your RA axis pivots, making the telescope side essentially lighter. So let me go ahead flip the OTA around, bringing the camera upside down and show you what I mean. So now, with the camera upside down, if we were to take RA now and bring it around, all of a sudden, we're heavier on the counterweight side because it brought the weight of the camera more towards the pivot point of the RA axis. So now we can get away without needing to buy more counterweights or heavier counterweights from here we can actually just go ahead and scoot our existing counterweights further in, giving us more room to actually balance this assembly out. So now, what do we do about balancing declination? And what do we do when we run into issues? First, it's important to understand that just like RA, Declination also has a pivot point that you want to balance. The declination acts as a scale just like RA acts as a scale. RA is a scale between OTA and counterweights. Declination is a scale between the back of the OTA and the front of the OTA. So when we're balancing declination, you want to make sure that your OTA doesn't fall one way or another. 
It's nice and balanced, just like your RA axis. So how do we do that? The easy way in a perfect world is moving your OTA forward and backward within the declination axis. Generally, that'll be done by moving your dovetail bar forward or backward within declination. You can somewhat fine tune that as well by loosening up your tube rings and moving your OTA back and forth within your tube rings to fine tune. As we add accessories though, such as my rotator here, um, we start adding weight and it becomes a little bit harder to fine tune. There are a couple of tricks that we can use though, just like moving the camera upside down when fine tuning the RA axis. The first thing here, if you take a look, this is my original spot for my guider. And in order to offset some of the added weight from accessories, if this is an option for you, as you can see here, I have a mounting plate for my guider at the back of the OTA. So now that takes weight off of the front and moves the weight of the guider to the back, helping to offset some of that weight. And then if you need to, you can further fine tune by moving your dovetail forward or backwards within your RT, um, declination axis, or you can scoot your OTA forward or backward within the tube rings to uh, fine tune. I always recommend use the dovetail bar because sometimes on the factory dovetails, you have a very narrow space between your tube rings and you don't want to have too much unsupported weight one way or another because that can cause flexure within your OTA and you want to avoid that. Now to further fine tune, if you still need to balance better, getting another longer dovetail bar. That longer dovetail bar serves you a couple of purposes. One, it spreads out the tube rings, giving you more room moving your OTA back and forth within the tube rings, and also it gives you more room to scoot the dovetail bar forward or backward within the declination axis. And that helps offset even more of that weight. Now, when I have my filter wheel on, it's pretty much an anvil in the front of this OTA. So, whereas with this particular setup here, I was able to balance with my factory dovetail bar, with the filter wheel on, there is no chance, as you can see here, absolutely no chance of balancing declination. So the solution was moving my guider to the back, taking some of that weight off the nose and putting it on the tail, and the longer dovetail bar to spread out my tube rings so I have more support to be able to scoot my OTA where I need it for clearance purposes, as well as more travel in my declination axis to actually balance this declination for this um, pretty uh, heavy setup when all the accessories are in. So I hope that you found this useful and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider a Hidden Light Photography membership. Your support really helps me create more content for you and there's lots of perks in it for you as well. Also that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you find this useful? What questions do you have? Are you struggling to balance your telescope and do you think that this will help you? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.